Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and it's my pleasure to walk you through some of the top productivity enhancements for InDesign CS6. So let's jump right in. One of the first enhancements is a split window display. So for example, I've got alternate layouts here, and I'm looking at the vertical layout, but if I wanted to see the horizontal layout, I could look at it in the Pages panel, but I'd actually have to scroll down to where the actual horizontal layout starts. So rather than have to constantly go back and forth in my document, I can now just go down to the bottom right-hand corner, click to turn on a split window display. So these windows operate independently of each other. You can, of course, design or work in either window, and whatever you do is happening in the document. You're basically getting a split window display that you've always wanted to look at multiple parts of your document all in the same window. So let's go ahead and turn off the split window, go back to the single window, and now let's talk about one of the most asked for enhancements inside InDesign, and that's a recently used font menu. So if I go up to my type menu, I have the font menu, but you'll notice that now there's a section at the very top for fonts that I recently used or accessed. So these fonts are always here um, in the application for fonts that I use, no matter which document I'm using them in. And of course, I have my complete list of fonts all the way down. So if I need to get back to Chaparral Pro, it's not just the font, it's the actual family, and I can get to whichever one I need and choose it as I need it without having to scroll through the list every single time. And as a bonus shortcut or tip, if you go to the preferences for type, you can actually control, because some people say, well, you know, I don't need that. I just want the regular font list. And then just set the number of recently used fonts to zero. And more importantly, if you're like me, I like things in alphabetical order. So you can say sort the recent fonts list alphabetically. And that way it won't be just the most recent one at the top or bottom. It will actually be in alphabetical order at all times. So you pick the options that best suit you, I kind of like the alphabetical, and I'll keep it at a default of 10. All right, so the next one is Align to Object, and this is actually one of my favorite new features. So I have three objects here. I have a logo, the A, and another logo, Unison. And if I wanted to align those center, well, and by default, it would always pick, I believe, the top object. But now I can say, well, maybe I want to align them all center on the A, or all center on Unison, or all center on the top object. So all I have to do now is just select each of the objects. With the three objects selected, there is a new feature in the control panel that says align to selection, align to key object, align to margins, align to page, align to spread. So I want to align to a key object. I want to specify which object it aligns to. When I do that, you notice that the top object, again by default, turns blue or has a blue outline around it. If I select this object, it has the blue outline around it. So now it's my key object. So now all I have to do is pick my alignment. So I'll say align center, and they are all centered now on the A. So love that feature. That's one I've been wanting for a long time. Now InDesign has always been able to save back at least one version, but people you know, kind of like, well, where is that? How do I do that? So now in the file menu, when you actually do a save as, you don't have to do an export. It's right here in the Save menu, Save Back for CS4 or later. So now we're actually going back two versions in the IDML format for CS6. So CS4 users will be able to open these files as well. This is one that's particularly important for people that are working for monochrome displays, such as some of the earlier Kindles, or you're just working on something that's going to be in grayscale, and you want to actually either preview it or export a PDF in grayscale. So for example, I have under the view menu, the ability to do proof setup. And now we can choose custom and we can actually choose a grayscale preview. So we can do S gray, we click okay. And now we get a grayscale preview of our entire document that we can turn on and off at any time. And this is also important for people that are, they may be designing multiple print jobs, or maybe I'm designing for digital publishing, it's going out in color to my tablet, but the actual printed version may be in grayscale, and I wanna make sure that I'm not getting things that are too dark or don't blend well together because the colors are so similar. So I can turn that on or off at any time, and of course we have the ability to do that for the PDF export as well. So if I go to my file menu, choose export, choose Adobe PDF for print, we'll choose one of the higher standards of PDF, 
And now when we go to output, we can do our color conversion and we can choose the same profile of S gray to make a grayscale PDF. Okay, our next feature we're gonna talk about is, and this is another one that's near and dear to my heart, it's about text frame fitting options. So we have text frames, and as you know, if you were to have a frame that was basically the size of the text, and then you were to continue typing, what you would ultimately get is a, a basically a, a warning letting you know you're in an overset situation. In other words, you've got more text that's, that that frame can handle. Well, in a word processing environment, we have the ability to just continue typing. The page will grow, it'll add more pages. Now, although InDesign can insert additional pages, it doesn't really do it on a frame by frame basis for making the frames themselves larger. So for example, I want to be able to take this frame and have it grow as the text grows inside of it or adds inside of it. So let's go ahead and go up to our object menu. Let's come down to text frame fitting options or text frame options. There's now a new auto size category. And I can say auto sizing, make it the height, the width, height and width, or height and width keep proportions. So I'm just gonna do the height and I'm gonna say that it grows from the top down. So now when I click OK, it will automatically continue making that frame bigger as I continue to type. So the frame will automatically adjust based on the content that's in it. Great feature, love it. So it will not let me have an overset situation. I can't even make it do it. It's just gonna keep making that frame big enough. All right, next, let's talk about spelling. Well, of course, InDesign has supported spelling for multiple languages and multiple dictionaries for a long time. Well, now we've switched the default to, if we go to spelling, it will basically be, for our dictionary, the Hunspell dictionaries by default. Now, your existing InDesign documents are okay. It'll still use proximity. But any new documents you create will be on Hunspell. What's the difference? Well, the Hunspell dictionaries are open source. So that means there are tons of them available for people to download and now install right inside of InDesign without going through any extra hoops or circles to get the dictionaries installed. So Hunspell, open source dictionaries, good thing because you can grab more as you need them and it's the new InDesign default. Proximity still works for those of you who have proximity dictionaries, but Hunspell will be the default going forward. So this next one is really a geeky feature. It's one of those things that the average user probably wouldn't think twice about, but for those of you who are into calculations, you're gonna really enjoy this one. It's complex calculations in InDesign. Let's take a look. So here I have that frame that we were working with. I had it wide and we can go ahead and now condense it down. And of course the height will continue to change based on what it needs to, to make the content fit. But if we look at this, for example, let's go ahead and make this frame a little bit bigger. There we go. It's 296 pixels wide. Well, what if I wanted it to be twice that? I could do the math in my head or grab a calculator, or I could use InDesign. So for example, if I click here, I can put in the time symbol for calculations times two, and it will make the frame twice as wide. Well, we, we were already doing that. What complex calculations means is that we can do it further. We can add more operators. So for example, I can say, not only make it 296 times two, but make it 296 times two plus 30 pixels. So it will make it twice as big and add 30 pixels to it. And just like that, I hit enter and it does the calculation, does all the math for me. And those of you, I know you grabbed your calculators and you checked it, but it worked. So one of the other things that we've added to InDesign CS6 is the ability to do a new kind of export. It's another graphics format. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most popular graphics formats. It's PNG or Portable Network Graphics. Let's go up to our file menu, choose export. And PNG is now one of the native formats that we can export to. So if you are working with a system that you prefer to export the graphics out as PNGs or portable network graphics, you can do that right inside of InDesign. You get the same kind of options as far as page range, spreads, quality, and whether or not it's gonna be a transparent background which PNG supports. 
Once you do your export, it'll take the number of pages you specified and export them out as PNG files that can be placed in other documents or other systems that require PNG. So as you can see, InDesign CS6 and all of its productivity enhancements is going to make your job easier, going to allow you to work faster and more efficiently. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.